So in order to do any action on any elements on your browser, first, first it is very important to access that element, right? So in a browser, if you want to access that element, in the sense, you need to interact with the DOM. So if you want to see the DOM of any browser, so, so what you need to do is if you go to your browser, right click on your browser, and if you click on inspect, so it will take you to the, uh, the DOM. So you can see, right, this is a DOM element and console. So here using this, you can identify those elements, okay? So Selenium provides wide range of uh, controls to identify the elements. Like you can identify the elements using the attributes called ID, name, class name. Class name is usually a not preferred. Link text, partial link text, CSS, XPath, tag name. These are all various uh, locators which we call that will support in Selenium. Right, so once you identify the element, then next, next comes into the action on your elements. So basically there are three types in Selenium actions are divided into three types. So first type is called action command. So which do uh, by doing these actions, the state of your element changes. So for example, uh, let's say that uh, you have some button and you want to click on it. That, you know, that may initiate some service call or that may initiate new page or sometimes you may need to click on a particular location for that you need to use a click at and uh, for example if you want to close a browser that is also kind of an action so double click so then you may have a drag and drop things like then you may when it comes for a text boxes or something so you need to enter a value right so usually that can be done using a function called type echo is something like if you want to a uh, provide some user messages in the console during the execution that you can use it as a console. So context menu is used for a right clicking on your web page. So there might be some chances like you will get some kind of a list box when you right click on your web page. Let, let's say that for example, you wanted to refresh a page. One way is in the top, you can click on the refresh. Second way is just right click and select the refresh. So for those kind of things, you can use it context panel. So this is all called a action commands. So second part is a property collection command. That means, so when you are doing a testing, so it's of course that sometime you may need to do a, some kind of a validation. So let's take an example. Uh, so you have a requirement, you will open your web application and you wanted to check the title is coming properly or not. So to check that title is coming properly or not, so the first you need to get the data from your title, right? So that is, store title so what it will do it will read the browser title and it will store it in a variable then according to user requirement they can use it okay so like that we have a various wide range of functions uh, you know uh, for example if you want to read something on your text box what is entered on text box you can use store text box present that so basically what it does is uh, it will check that whether text box is present on your application so if you want to read what is there in text box, then you can use store value. So if you want to check whether, uh, you know, uh, uh, complete uh, page is having some kind of a text on it. For example, welcome is displayed on your web browser or not. So then you can read complete text from your web browser and you can check that welcome is part of it or not, right? So these are all called the property collection. So basically what it will do based on what function you are calling, it will read that property and it will store it in a variable. And comes to the third part, which is a verification command. So this is one step advanced than uh, the property collection command. So whereas property collection command, just read the values and store it in a variable, but verification command, it reads it and it compares with user expected value and it will tell that whether it is matching or not. For example, let's say that, you know, uh, you are having verify body text. So verify body text means it, you need to pass two things, right? So first you need to get the value and then you need to pass expected value. What actually you are going to search on your, uh, the browser page. Same thing like, for example, you may have to check sometime whether alert is displayed or not. You may have to check whether the title is matching or not. So those are all kind of verification things you can do it using a verification commands. Okay. So there are some more functions uh, uh, with respect to uh, elements, which is not basically a part of this training. So might be able to create.